welcome guys. So we'll start with you, Chloe, who came through Achievement Free Sport in 2010. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in your specific sport? Um, where do I start? Um, it's mainly due to what I went through as a child growing up, so starting from about two or three. Um, if any of you guys here heard of epilepsy, and you might have had any family, so you have seizures and blackouts. So I suffered with that from a young age, and then also I had signs of autism and the swelling on my brain. So I didn't really get to grow up like everybody else. I was in and out of school, thrown out of school, and facing lots of challenges. Um, so background to the sport. Um, what age was I? When I was six, I was permanently excluded from school because teachers couldn't handle me and not know how to meet my needs. Um, then I was in and out great on the street hospital and stuff, trying to get rid of the swelling on my brain and cure the epilepsy. And then from the ages of, let's say, seven till 13, I was in special needs school. And my mum was really like, supportive, quit her job and went in the school to make sure the teachers were doing the right things. And then fortunately, around about 10, 11, the epilepsy stopped, stopped having seizures, and my behaviour and that started to slow down because of it. And, but I was in a state of mind that, all right, do my parents put me back into full-time mainstream school like you guys, or do we stay down the special needs route and put me in care? So my mum had to make a big decisions, to throw me in the deep end in, back into mainstream school in year nine. And that whole journey, as you can imagine, wasn't easy for me mentally. So I started off in year nine in all the bottom sets with everyone because, you know, I've been a special needs all those years, even though I've done a bit of learning. And it was that stage that I looked to sport to help me get through it. And also teachers could see that like, I really liked being active and on the go. So I started off playing randoms for the school, swimming, athletics or the borough team, youth games and that. And then I just grew a light for the sport. It kind of distracted my mind. It got me away from all the stress and bullying that I was going through and made me more accepted. And then I just woke up one day and said, I want to make a living from this. I love sport. I love the training, dedication it's involved and everything else. And then I said, I need to find the sport that I'm best at. So I was playing West Ham football. So I was in the team. I was in the rowing team, swimming team, you name it, all different sports in England until I found that one sport. And then one day I was in sixth form. <clears throat> So before I get on to that, I got into wrestling, um, finished off with a school. After year nine, I'd done my first ever sats in the big hall, like I'm sure you've done before, which was scary. And I got all national average of results and teachers were shocked. I was like, one year in mainstream school and I'm already getting the national level after everything I've been through. And I was putting all the top sets and um, in all the higher papers and stuff. And I was just determined to come out with no Ds or below. I said, look, I'm going to get away to see. And teachers were like, oh, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Just get the minimum you need to get into sixth form and, you know, catch up. And I said, no, I know what I can get and I'm going to do it. Even if they're predicting me Ds or whatever, I said, I'm going to do it. So GCSE results, they came and I got all 10 A to Cs, six um, Bs, two As and the rest Cs. And um, went on sixth form, done my A levels in BTEC and went on to university, <coughs> Brunel, if you've heard of it. And then graduated four years ago at 21 um, with a sports scholarship and sports science degree with PE. So that was like my education route. And then once um, I was in my final year of sixth form, that's when wrestling got involved. I was at a multi-sport event. I was actually playing men's football, taking on all the boys. <coughs> wrestling coach's sons were playing like, with me. And they thought, oh, she can handle the boys at rest, um, football. She can handle them at wrestling. So I went and done a trial, tried it out. And saying to my head, just said, this is the sport for me. So I stopped playing and that, um, and then when I started uni, I had TV following me around for a year and following me through my journey. And when I was on TV, I had my university rugby team begging me to play for them, even though I've never played in my life. They was like, you can do all the dirty work, you can do all the tackles, you can do this, that. I said, rugby? I said, all right then. So while I was competing in wrestling, I was also playing professional rugby for Richmond, if anyone's know it, and the university team, and being filmed on TV and studying. But then I had to make the decision, do I really want to go to the high level in this sport, in wrestling? If I do, everything else I have to give. So I finished university and I stopped playing rugby. And then since 2012, I've took it on full time. And after two years in the sport, I went to the Commonwealth Games last year and I just missed out on the bronze medal, but that was my first major tournament. So to finish top five in the Commonwealth was a big achievement. And stuff. So that's kind of been my journey. I've got into sport and I'll tell you a bit more in a sec about where I'm currently at. We've got Tony now. Uh, you are a man of many talents. You have music, fashion, TV and film. First of all, do you want to let us know how you got involved with music? Um, Alright, so I got involved through bullying at school actually. So when I first came, I basically grew up, I was born and grew up in Nigeria and then I came to London and I used to get bullied a lot because I wasn't able to speak 
correctly and I wasn't able to, I guess, understand what the kids were saying. And so around 2002, a lot of you guys now know of Grime. Have you guys heard of Grime? Yeah? You don't have to pretend for your teachers. <laughs> so basically, around when Grime first came out and it wasn't accepted by the mainstream, um, so this was 2002, every, the new thing that was happening in pretty much every school around London, and this was also when Bluetooth first came out, so every phone back then, like the coolest thing they had was a Bluetooth. <laughs> and so videos of people spitting and um, or basically performing lyrics in little ciphers whilst they had their um, lunch breaks was what was happening. And that's how I got involved. I basically decided to jump into a cipher and ended up being liked by the same people who were trying to bully me. And then also being like made into some sort of hero by my friends who were fr pretty much like all the the teachers, what, teachers' pets and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's how I, I basically got started with music. And you've been singing since quite a young age. Uh, what made you so passionate about singing? I'm from a musical family, so um, my dad and my uncle are all musicians. Um, my mum used to be a tour manager, so um, I kind of knew nothing else growing up. Um, but um, I, I knew I had a voice from a young age. Um, it was just, yeah, I think I was born into it and uh, I enjoy it and I loved it and I knew that that was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, so, yeah. And you're being very quiet with us today because you have a lot of achievements today. So tell us a little bit about the excitement you're doing with what you've done so far. Um, so I've been doing music, I've been recording my own stuff for about, um, I'd say two years now, and it is a long process, you know, I think half of these artists that you see out and about, you think that they just came up overnight, they've been working on this for a very, very long time. Um, so I've been working with um, a few London-based people, so like Boy Better Know, uh, Skepta, Jammer, and um, yeah, they're, they're a few of the London people. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, all great people, making really great music, and it'll be soon to come out. Coming from a Nigerian household, we were stuck on, it was all about the academics. So things like medicine, finance, being an accountant. You must be an accountant. You must be a doctor. You must be this, you must be that. But I was not interested in that. Um, at first, I really wanted to be acting, um, and that kind of reignited my, my passion in that. Um, so it was doing a, I was on a film um, and I saw some people acting and I was like, I can do this. So that's how I began again. Um, that's how the kind of passion got reignited. A school from New York that came to the UK to kind of train or to look for actors to come, come down to the school to, to train as an actor. So the school came down, went to go on an audition. Um, long story short, I, I passed the audition, got in on the scholarship, went to New York, trained as an actor, came back to the UK and started working. So I got my first agent in 2010. Um, yeah, just just started working as an actor. Uh, done a few couple of things. Um, the main thing for me that kind of that kind of rings out again was Prince of Persia. But then I I was fortunate to to do the what is it, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Um, but I was working on stunts with John Depp on that. Um, so that was quite that was interesting. That was good. Firstly, Jason, can you tell us how what was it like doing studying and pursuing your dream? Time. How difficult was that? Uh, secondary school was really hard to juggle it um, because I would um, obviously schools like 8 30 until 3 20 it was, and then um, I'd have like rehearsals in the evening. And I'd be because I, I used to work mainly as a, I used to be a dancer before I was a singer, really. Um, so I'd have to kind of balance it, do my homework, etc. etc. Um, so it was a bit hard, and then obviously social life as well. There was a lot of times I couldn't. Go on to like what Chloe was saying. There's a lot of times I couldn't go to like some family gatherings and I couldn't go see some friends or go bowling or eat some Chinese and cinema and stuff like that. I had to sacrifice um, to kind of become a better me, better performer, a better singer, a better, you know, just better. Um, but then in um, set, um, college, brick school, it was a bit easier because obviously I was studying musical theatre, so the stuff that I kind of had to. Um, balance, it became like my overall kind of thing. Um, so it's a bit easier, but I guess priorities, sorting out your priorities is very important and just know what you want to do and, um, and go and do you, really above anything, doing you. With Solar, you were kind of almost born into it. I mean, your dad's been involved, like how did you get involved at such a young age doing things like this? Okay. 
So, Spray Down in the Woods was always quite important to me because my dad, who you had earlier, is also the founder. Um, so, I got quite lucky, but then not so lucky. I didn't do as well as I really thought I wanted to do at school. Um, so, I just managed to get my GCSEs to go off to A levels. Um, and then saw A levels as a bit of fun and realised quite late on that that was the most stupid mistake I've probably ever made in my whole entire life. Because um, A levels from GCSE is a really, really hard jump. Um, it's probably harder from A level to uni. So I decided that actually what I'd have to do is once I left school, once I left A levels, um, I would just start working, wouldn't go off to university. Um, and see what I could do and what experiences I can build from there. So, Spirit London Awards, I started with 2011, so I would have been 18, and I helped run the event at the Royal Albert Hall, which is an amazing um, venue in London. Um, I then, the year after, in 2012, we had a big year, uh, that's what you saw the video, uh, we did the O2 Arena, um, and I was event manager on that. I have also run a couple of events at Downing Street, which has been quite fun. So I've met the Prime Minister a few times. Do like David Cameron, um, he's a pretty cool guy. And yeah, the artists that I've got to work with as well, so Labyrinth, Chasing Status, Dushi, McFly. Um, it's, yeah, been quite an amazing experience for me, i say. What are you going to be doing here? How did you get involved? So, as um, we just discussed with you at the beginning, Step Up. Um, Step Up comes through PL Education. So, PL is a programme that we run in the school which helps to boost grades for students, mainly in year 10, 11, 12 and 13. Um, so, we look into recollection um, and retention when it comes to information, also stress management, time management, um, and also self-leadership because you don't realise how important all these things are when it comes to revision um, for your GCSEs, because as I said, they're very hard. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be working with your year 12s and 13s, so you might see me around school. Chloe, can you give a bit of advice to the audience? Because obviously you've had some struggles when it's come to your career. So how, what advice should you give the audience if they ever came across the same struggles? Mm, there's many advice. Advice relating to education. Um, never let anyone set a standard. You set your own standard. So that includes friends, teachers and so on. You know in yourself where you want to be, don't let no one stop you. And just remember to always hang around the right people because I see people from school now who come up to me and literally asking me, can you be a business partner? Can you do this, do that? When in school I was just a quiet girl with my head down doing my stuff, getting bullied and people thinking, oh, she's going nowhere. But that's because I just let my success do the talking. So don't let, if sometimes you've got to be a loner if you want to be successful, but when you make it, everyone wants to know you. So that's in education. In sport, it's going to be a hard route. No matter who you know, what you know, it's very, it can be a political game. So you have to really be knowing what you're doing and know the right people. Because you could be the top footballer, you could be the top this, that. But if someone else who's a bit worse than you knows X, Y, Z, they will get there. So while you're young, do networking. That's the best thing I can advise you. Network every football club, every swimming club, you name it. And if someone says you've got no potential, I got told that when I first started wrestling. And now, all of a sudden, you know, everyone wants me training with them all over the world. So again, set your standard in school. But overall in life, it's just about believing in yourself, really. But at the end of the day, you know what's deep inside you. You know where you're going. So if someone else tells you you can't do it, tell them I'm going to prove you wrong and I'm going to do it. That's what keeps me going. I'll say, when it comes to pursuing your dreams, one of the things that I've learned, and I still learn in life, is that no one knows, yeah, it's basically no one knows what you want as much as you do. So you kind of have to take it hands on and understand that, I guess to reiterate what Chloe's already said, when you're being bullied or if you're going through a stage, which would be more like, um, applicable to yourselves. If you're ever going through stages where people are trying to belittle you or you're feeling like you're not being valued, don't look at it as a bad. Actually use it as time to grow and actually use it as time to know that, you know what, you must be doing something right because I always find that people want to pull you down when you're above them. Like they can't pull you down if you're not above them technically. So um, 
apply that to whatever you're doing and know that when it comes to your dreams, even when you do have a team of positive people around you and the rest of it, and you've got friends who are supporting you, family, the rest, understand that still no one can get it as much or be as passionate about it as you. Just to be the best me that I can be. Nothing in regards to acting or... I think the most important thing in life is just being true to yourself, to be honest. Um, and the best version of you is what the world is waiting for. It's very important to just get to know people, talk to people, introduce yourself and not be scared, etc, etc. And, um, and yeah, just believe in yourself, the world is your right now. Alright, all you have to say is keep it on the low. Alright, try this. Say, 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 keep it on the low. Shout it as loud as you can say, say, keep it on the low. 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 Try Keep it on the low. 